situation and like being held up at gunpoint, for example, um, people who are who have that option, the doctors don't tell them that they have this option. Patients have to ask for it. They have to ask their medical profession professional first. And then once that happens, they go through several different processes. They go through psychiatric evaluations to make sure that they're sound of mind and to make sure that they're having clear and rational thoughts about this. They go through medical testing, all that other stuff to make sure that there's there's no chance that they're going to get better. Um, so the fact that you said that they could be held up at gunpoint to do this, it wouldn't actually be possible. Well, there are lots of people who actually go on things like Skype and whatever those websites any other ones, but they actually go on there and convince people who want to die to commit suicide. It happens all the time. And it's like, hold on. <laughs> it's like, the, the idea of legalizing it, like, sure, there's going to be lots of legislations and lots of rules, but as soon as that starts happening, you're going to get this slippery slope where everything starts changing, and everybody, everybody always wants to be equal. Everybody. So it's like taking, it's like giving that right to kill themselves to somebody else, but not to Everybody just kind of, it, it's got to be for everyone, but not everyone is needing that, you know what I mean? Just because, you're, just because you're depressed for a little bit or whatever, doesn't mean you need to kill yourself. So it's like, if they're going to want the same thing if they have that option available. Okay, Kim first, then Sharice. Um, what you said about they want to have equal opportunity, they can't have it right now because it's not legal everywhere. It's only legal in certain areas. So the... If, and in those areas, you have the option to say, hey, I don't think I'm getting better. I want to start the process. I want to know that there's an option for me at the end of the tunnel if I don't start to get better. They want to know that they have that option of not having to suffer, of being able to end their life how they choose, surrounded by friends and family and all that. Um, miracles aren't guaranteed at all. Like, we said miracles happen every day, but they're not guaranteed. Go ahead, Sharice. She stole my plate. Oh, she said everything? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, Whatever. Go ahead. So, um, so, I mean, the debate is whether or not it should be legal. And I don't think it should be. Because it's... I, I, I think human life is valuable. And, yeah, I mean, at some point it gets tough. But you can't result to killing yourself as an option for making it better. I mean, you gotta think of like all the people you leave behind. Yeah, I mean, I watched my mom die for a week and I'm not gonna lie, I, I wish I would've been there longer because she could've had a better chance until the doctors came in and said there was no option. You know, that's the last thing I wanna be hearing, right? So, I mean, the debate is whether or not it should be legal. Like I said, it, it shouldn't be. If I have any slight hope, in making it, I want that hope to remain. I don't want to have that option of having to, you know, to kill myself or having someone to kill me for, you know, just to make it better. So, yeah. Go ahead, Sharice. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, but you don't understand the pain that they're going through. My friend recently died, and she decided to not go under undergo all the medical, whatever, whatever. She had breast cancer. So she only had a year to live, and she, she decided not to take any chemo or anything like that. She decided that this was her time to go, and she could not take the pain, and she did not want to bring her family through that. They said their goodbyes and everything like that, but she just could not watch her family watch her suffer. And that's basically what this is. Kim, and then Kayla. Um, another point is, like, human life is very valuable, but when it comes to, say, for example, when people are on life support and they're suffering and they have no, they don't recognize the family that's coming to visit them anymore, they can't feed themselves, they don't, they're not awake any of the time. What is the quality of life that they have right then? They don't have the quality of life. They're basically just waiting to die and their family gets to stand around and watch them slowly slip away and deteriorate and all that. So if that person had had the choice to end their life before they got to that point, they could have alleviated so much suffering both on their part and their family members. Okay, Halen and Choker. Oh, quick. Okay, we got like half a second. Oh. Half a second. <laughs> half a second. Go. Right, gotcha. Actually, um, Ten. Oh, I totally got distracted now. But, uh, oh, go ahead, Choker. I totally lost I wanted to ask. You, you said people on life support, like, they're, they're suffering. But uh, I mean, these people are not, they're not awake. 
to even know if they're suffering or not. Like, how, I mean, how can you be so sure they're suffering, you know? I mean, when, when you're sleeping, it's not like, you know, I mean, because you're shaking doesn't mean, you know, you're in pain. I mean, like, so, how do you know they're suffering? Okay. That's just the question. Okay. okay but That's over. Yeah. Now, uh, closing point. So <laughs> Two minutes for each. Go ahead. Show me those. To conclude, we just discussed, we believe that dying with dignity should not be illegal, considering how much physical or even mental pain that a person can be in. We explain why palliative care cannot completely take away all pain, and even though the patient may, be termi may not be terminally ill, enduring that pain until they are considered terminally ill is unfair. No one should have to go through that. Um, people should have control over their own lives, and it shouldn't be anybody else's decision except for their own. Um, even the non-voluntary aspect of it. If the person had the decision to die with dignity before they got to the point of where they couldn't make decisions for themselves anymore, then the family members wouldn't have had to make that decision for them. We believe that voluntary consent when you're able to recognize your own pain is highly important and it should be up to you whether you believe you are able to handle it until the universe decides whether you die or not. Okay, thank you. Closing points over here. Uh, Every life is valuable, no matter the situation or the circumstances. We do not have any authority on whether or not someone lives or dies. Euthanasia, euthanasia does not put any accountability for murder. And yes, it is murder. It is a crime that deserves justice, and it allows for murderers to get away with such criminal act. Uh, there is no line to decide who can be euthanized. Death or legalizing euthanasia is a ticking bomb that can only bring misery and concern to our society. Uh, there's a lot of gray areas, and taking away that, like, not being able to see these gray areas doesn't really put anyone in a very good state of mind to be able to legalize this kind of thing. So, that is it. All right, round of applause for the debate.